Roll for Crit presents how to play Terraforming Mars in five minutes or less or more. Terraforming Mars is the strategy game that prepares you for the future, as you'll be making the planet Mars habitable by humans and empowering your evil megacorporation. Designed by Jacob Frixelius and published by Stronghold Games, it's got a quote from the president of the Mars Society on the box, so you know it's legit. In Terraforming Mars, your goal is to have more points than your rivals by generating more resources and doing a better job at improving the planet. After setup, you'll find yourself with a player board, player cubes, and a corporation card, either a basic one or a more advanced option. One of your player cubes will start in the designated spot on the TR track around the main board. Your TR, or terraform rating, is your base score and also most of your income. Anytime you place an ocean tile or increase the oxygen or temperature on the board, your TR increases by one, so keep that in mind. There are six types of resources to keep track of on your player board. Mega credits, also known by me as Mars Euros, money you'll spend to buy and play cards. Steel and titanium, which can be used to help you play certain card types, plants used to create greenery, energy used by various cards, and heat used to raise the planet's temperature. Every resource you have you'll keep track of with these cubes, gold being worth 10 of one resource, silver worth 5, and bronze worth 1 apiece. Which section of your board they're in will tell you what they represent. Each of these resource production tracks start at zero unless otherwise specified by your corporation card. If you chose a basic corporation, you now draw 10 project cards into your hand for free. Otherwise, each player gets 10 project cards and may choose to buy as many as they're able to afford with their allotted starting money, thus establishing their starting hands. Each card has a required cost that you must spend in order to play it from your hand in the upper left corner, but when initially buying cards to go into your hand, they will always cost 3 mega credits each, no matter what that number is. Any cards you choose not to buy get discarded, and discarded cards always go into a single pile face down next to the main deck. Once everyone's done this, you can get started with the game proper. Game rounds, referred to as generations, consist of four phases. On the first round of the game, you'll actually be skipping phases one and two, but we're going to go over them all for you now anyway. Phase one is player order. Pass the first player token to the left and move the generation marker up one space on the track. Done. Phase two is the research phase. Each player draws four cards and decides which, if any, they would like to buy to add to their hand. Again, cards cost three credits each, and extras get discarded face down, just like before. There is no hand limit. Phase three is the action phase, where pretty much every single thing of importance happens. Players take turns, deciding to either take one action, or two actions, or to pass. You're allowed to take the same action twice in the same turn if able to, or just take one action before moving on to the next player. If you decide to pass, then you'll be unable to take any actions until the next round. Here's a long list of the actions you can take on your turn. Action 1. Play a card from your hand. Pay the amount listed in the corner in Mega Credits and follow the card's instructions. Also note that some cards require you to have certain tags in play, these symbols at the tops of the cards, or that the board be in a certain state, for example, that the temperature is at a specified level. If the card features a space tag or a building tag, then you can convert your steel or titanium resources respectively into Mega Credits to immediately lessen the cost of the card. There are three types of cards. Green cards have an immediate one-time effect, blue cards have an effect and or provide you with an additional action for future turns, and red cards are one-time events. Read the card's instructions to find out exactly what it does. An image of a resource affects that resource. A resource in a brown border means you adjust that resource's production. A red border means it affects another player. A large circle with a number in it provides victory points at the end of the game. And again, there are these tags at the top of the card which could matter later on. Red cards are turned face down after being played. Blue and green cards stay face up in stacks in case you need to refer to their tags or actions later on. Action 2. Use one of the six available standard projects printed on the game board. That's right, this action has six sub-actions, which are as follows. You can discard cards from hand for one credit each, spend 11 credits to increase your energy production by one, spend 14 credits to increase the temperature by one, spend 18 credits to place an ocean tile on the board, spend 23 credits to place a greenery tile, or spend 25 credits to place a city tile. Don't forget to increase your TR as a result of some of these actions. 
Now let's talk about tiles. When you place a tile, mark it with one of your cubes. Unless it's an ocean tile, they don't belong to any one player. Ocean tiles and only ocean tiles must be placed on their reserved ocean spaces. Greenery tiles must be placed next to a tile you already own, if possible, and they increase the oxygen level when placed. City tiles cannot be placed next to other cities. Some spaces are also reserved for special tiles. At the end of the game, you'll receive one point for each greenery tile you placed, as well as one point for each greenery tile adjacent to one of your played city tiles. City tiles also increase your credits production by one and you receive whatever reward is printed on the space you placed your tile, resources, or cards. And finally, you get two mega credits for each ocean tile adjacent to the tile you just placed. Action three, claim a milestone. At the bottom of the board are a set of five milestones, which you can claim on your turn if you meet the requirements. From left to right, those requirements are having a TR of 35, owning three city tiles, owning three greenery tiles, having eight building tags in play on your cards, and having 16 cards in hand. If you meet the minimum requirements of one of these goals and you have eight credits to spare, then this action will get you five victory points at the end of the game. But it's first come, first serve. Only one player can claim each milestone, and once three have been claimed, the other two are off the table, so get in while the getting's good. Action four. Fund an award. Awards are like milestones that don't trigger until the end of the game. Again, only three of these five awards can be activated. The first one costs eight credits to fund, the second 14, and the third 20. Awards that were funded get checked at the end of the game, and whoever has first place in that category gets five points, with two points going to second place. Non-funded awards are ignored. The awards are given out for having the most tiles on the board, having the highest credits production, having the most science tags on cards in play, having the most heat resource cubes, and having the most steel and titanium resource cubes. These awards can be activated by anyone at any time, but won't necessarily go to the person who funded them. Action 5. Use an action on a blue card that you played previously by paying its indicated cost and mark it with a player cube. These can only be used once per generation. Action 6. Spend 8 plant cubes from your supply to place one greenery tile onto the board. If possible, it must be placed next to a tile you already own. Action 7. Spend 8 heat cubes to raise the temperature by one step. Remember that anytime you make the planet better, i.e. place an ocean tile or raise the temperature or oxygen level, you gain 1 TR point. Also note the rewards that you'll get for raising those parameters to certain points on those tracks. And that's all 7 actions that you can perform on your turn. Really it's 12, plus whatever cards you've played, but who's counting? After every player has decided to pass, the final phase is production. First, convert whatever cubes you have in your energy section into heat. Then receive mega credits for the turn. Your mega credits income equals the number on your production track, plus your current TR score. Then generate any other resources you have production for. Finally, clear cubes from your action cards and start the next round. At the end of the round in which all of the ocean tiles have been placed onto the board and temperature and oxygen are maxed out, the game ends. Your victory points are a combined score derived from your TR, any awards you've come in first or second place for, milestones you've claimed, points or other bonuses on your played cards, and tiles on the game board. If you have the most points, you win! In conclusion, buy cards, play cards, place tiles, make Mars great again. That's terraforming Mars in a nutshell. Did you get all that? Don't forget to like and subscribe and leave your comments below. Oh yeah!